Recording in progress.
Sweet song, coffee family. Do you know what time it is? You know what time it is. Good morning, America. Good morning, family and friends. I'm so happy that you are with me, and I'm with you from the nation's capital of the world, Washington, D.C. Come on, pick up your mug with me this morning and say. Ay, que rico. Hey, welcome, welcome, and welcome to Coffee with Pastor. Good morning, everybody. Do you smell what the coffee is cooking this morning? Welcome home. Welcome home, everybody. Welcome home. Thank you, my 
Let us all pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I humble myself before you, thanking you for the, your saving grace. Thank you for redeeming us, for our forgiveness, forgiving of our all our sins, our thoughts, our transactions. Lord, as we begin this devotional, we ask that your spirit may move in a supernatural way. We ask that you heal the body, that you heal the mind, and that you heal the soul. Lord, that you may be able to help us navigate through troubled waters and struggles and challenges of life. Lord, we ask that your spirit may lead us, guide us, and direct us. And Lord, that your word will continue to transform us, renew us, and restore our lives by the power of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our Zoom ID number is 934-464-7066. Won't you give God the praise? Give him praise. Come on this morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this blessed um, uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, we're having problems, people. Yeah, we're having problems with... Uh, Ah, with this um, Instagram, right? Instagrammies wants to give me some problems this morning. Well, good morning. We're not on Instagram. Uh, they're being pity, pet, petty, pity, petty, 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 petty. Ah, whatever it is. Sooner or later, we're going to have to go live only on our app. It seems like that. Uh, amen. Um, that's what's going to happen. We're only going to be able to uh, connect uh, through um, let's see. Okay, now nah, maybe this one. Give me a second. Uh, yep, yeah. sooner or later, we're going to have to only be on our app because there are uh, being petty with this, with the music, um, knowing uh, that music is public uh, domain. Um, it, the music uh, is uh, creative co uh, comments, uh, creatives comments so it's for the public but uh they're being sticky with all this but good morning it is 10 31 we gotta go we gotta go we gotta go uh the date is 319 319 2024 uh there's a weather alert here in the dmv uh it is chilly to say the least we were um it is 42 degrees 
uh, right now. Uh, uh, there's supposed to be a fire weather watch. Wow, okay. Uh, mostly cloudy, going high 53, low 35. Last night was a little chilly uh, here in the DMV. What is your weather here in your area today? Let's give a shout out to Love My Two Bellas. God bless you, my love. So good to see you. Also, Jesse's Grooves was on earlier. God bless you. Thank you for joining us and all those on Instagrammies. Let's give a shout out to our people, Reina and Evangelist, Alfaz in um, Pakistan. Bless you, my family. Good morning, Chris Soto, our minister, Lamont Banks. God bless you. Good morning and welcome home. Evangelist Javi. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Naomi. Romero Pacheco. Blessings. Blessing to each and everyone. I'll be, in, I'll be in Puerto Rico soon. By the end of next month, I'm going to see if I could catch and see you um, this time. I'm going to make a point of it. Amen. Uh, as I'm going with my... Oh, sorry. I want to give a shout out also to my fiance. Um... Amen. God bless you. Um, Abby, 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 bless you. Love you. Amen. Uh, may the Lord uh, continue to give you strength uh, in these uh, times of brokenness and feeling. Uh, you know, if you didn't know, my uh, fiance's uh, mom went to be with the Lord. Uh, amen. Please keep the Acosto. Uh, Vasquez family in your prayers. Uh, amen. When you remember. Also for Minister Kevin Scott. Uh, that's right. Uh, this Friday. Thank you, Reina. Uh, before we start our book, The Armor of God, part one today, Fire Extinguisher. Friday. Friday will be the third anniversary of the Little Messages of Christ. Uh, amen. They will be uh, ministering uh, songs and worship to the Lord on Friday. So please, at 10 o'clock, we won't have coffee. We'll have coffee with the little messengers of Christ in their anniversary. If you want to drop a, a, a love seed, if you want to bless, the number is there. Thank you. Uh, the number is there. Uh, text uh, coffee. I'm going to put it up again. Uh, text coffee. If you want to bless our ministry in any way, this is what you need to do. Text coffee, capital letters, coffee to 1-888-364-4483. That is the number. If you want to just give a soul seed. Is the number I'm putting it up in Instagram is amen. Just be a blessing, uh, amen. Please keep uh, us in prayer. We're in day two, uh, we started uh, yesterday, right? Uh, uh, well, we started last week, a uh, week, uh, week five, the shield of faith, and yesterday we started in day one, right? Real faith, day two today. Or was it last week? I'm sorry. Last week, we were day one. This week, we are in day uh, two, which is on fire. But the subtopic today is fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher. What is God going to talk to us today? She says, the shield of faith, underlying shield of faith, page 131, was especially important to the Apostle Paul. Why was it? Know how she knows? Because other than prayer, he put more of an emphasis on this piece of armor than any other by including additional statements before and after mentioning 
the shield itself. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6, my guys. Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to read uh, verses 14 and 15 and 16 and 17. And look at the difference. Let's look deeper, right? Let's look deeper. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse, ch chapter 6, verse 14, sorry, 15 and 16, four, sorry, 14 and 15, 16 and 17. Stand for, therefore, having gird your loins with truth. Now, again, gird or the girdle or the thing that was, that will put everything into place is what? The truth. And have you put on the breastplate of righteousness, right? So we understand that the gird is the truth. The breastplate is what? Righteousness, right? Continue. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel. So now we know that the feet, the shod, the sandals. Hi, Abby. God bless you. Good morning and welcome home. My girls in the house. Uh, amen. Uh, we know that um, the shod of the feet, which was the sandal, right? We talked about that a couple weeks ago, was the preparation of the gospel of peace. 16 and 17, let's read. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, with which you will be able now, it didn't explain, right? This is the difference now. It, it, it under, now, if the gird is the truth, the breastplate is righteousness, the shot on your feet is the preparation of the peace, right, of the gospel of the peace. But look at what it says, the shield of faith, with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Let's continue. Then take up the, the helmet of what? Salvation. So she, she, well, of course, the Apostle Paul explains each detailing except what? The shield of the faith. Why is, is a Paul like, like, okay, so let's continue. Uh, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So each integral part except the shield of faith. Why is that? Why why does he do that? Right? Now, here are just a couple ways uh, he drew added integral intrigue to this to this piece of equipment. First, he described, underline that, he described the benefits of of using it. What is the benefit? Let's read it again. What is the be benefit of the shield? Come on, it's, it's simple, right? What 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 is the benefit? In addition to all, in addition to all the pieces of the armor, take up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish. So faith extinguishes what the fire the firing darts, your faith in Christ Jesus. Bye, baby. Have a safe trip. Jet Blue is leaving us. That's not my name. Jet Blue is leaving us. All right. So, the shield. Hi, Stacy. So good to see you. God bless you. So, the shield is what extinguishes. Or the, the, the shield of faith is what extinguishes the fire. The fire. Yes. With the, the, so that's the benefit of having the shield. Right? Let me just lower this so you can hear. So with the other pieces of armor, she continues, we're left to discover the benefits for, for ourselves by studying other portions of the letter but with the shield in addition to referring to it 
earlier when talking about faith in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Can we go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1? Chapter 1? Sorry, chapter 2, uh, verses uh, 1 through 10. Let's go to Ephesians. Chapter 2. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. It says, And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Now, he, 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 Paul is explaining to the Ephesians the contrast that when you come to Christ, you're not any more that. You're not no more a child of disobedience. Right? You're not no more that person of lust of the flesh, fulfilling those desires of the flesh, right? Uh, that we once were. That's what Paul, now let's go to four. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his what great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been given, you have been saved and raised up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might what? Show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith come on and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works least anyone should boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them so there it goes by faith, by faith, let, let, for by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, at least anyone should boast. Why? Why, why is God? Why God? Why? Because, because he knew that man was going to be boastful. He, why, why did he include the ego, the, our ego, our pride, uh, that 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 mix that we have in us, because he knows that man could be puffed up, their their minds could go somewhere else, they could be engrandecido, they could be feeling that greatness in them, amen. And God had to tell him, listen, is that you be saved just because you're good looking, or because you have power, or because of your intelligence? Or because you can maneuver or you can talk your way out of things. No, it's by my grace, it's by faith in Christ. So coming to Christ is by faith, not by sight. It's by faith and not by sight. Listen, uh, it's a humbling experience when we are able to fall on one in our knees. God has always been dealing through the Bible, through the Word of God, through ancient, from Genesis to Revelation. From the beginning, God has always been, His intention is that people will come to Him in worship, in spirit and truth, that people will come to Him uh, uh, voluntarily, uh, amen, with an open heart, with an open mind, with an open spirit, to uh, uh, come to Him freely. In, in other words, if, if God wanted to come from heaven and show himself, everybody would bow down and receive him and reverence him. But 
He wants people to reverence him without seeing him tangibly. Somebody needs to understand this morning because people cannot believe without seeing. That's why we struggle with our faith. We struggle with our walk with God. Many don't want to come to him because they struggle with this. Also, the phrase, in addition to all, right, in that scripture, provides a linguistic break in the passage that prepares us for something new and distinct from his explanation, explanation of explanation of, I'm losing my English, uh, explanation of the first three pieces. With the belt, with the belt, breastplate, and shoes, he conveys them as a spiritual what? uniform, right? That should be worn by believers in, in all times, minute by minute, day by day. But I need you to underline this next sentence. But he approaches this piece of equipment differently. Continue to underline. With the shield, he commands for it to be taken up. This is a part of the, of the armor that we need to take up. Look at it at this way, she says. A nurse might wear scrubs every single day to work because it's her uniform. But when the need arises, right? She needs it for work, her scrubs daily. But when she, when the need arises, she says, when, when something is popping or needs to, listen to what she says, she will pick up a stethoscope, stethoscope, blood pressure machine, a thermometer, or any number of tools to use on her patience. Underline this. Likewise, and we finish here. Likewise, we must always wear our, da our daily divinity given uniform, but also be prepared to take up the others when required. The shield of faith is what protects us, extinguishes, because once it hits the shield, which is metal, uh, uh, there's some other ingredients in it, but it's protective. It has also uh, a, a, a leather, a thick leather. It has a, a, a it, it's very heavy. And when the, when the, uh, uh, firing darts come with, with coming at you, it is the faith that's going to maintain you. It's going to protect you and the other areas that may, uh, be exposed. The armor, it's not totally because then you're not movable, right? It's, it's, it's a breastplate. It's the helmet. Your, your face is kind of, uh, open. Uh, there is some other areas in your body that you don't have this armor. So the shield is what protects you from those areas. The shield of faith is what guards you. Listen, when you feel that, and many of you, I know, go through this in the nights, especially thinking, overthinking. And I want to concentrate on that today, about how we allow those thoughts, hi Stephanie, those thoughts that are coming out, those, see, the enemy, I, I want to, I want, I want to stay, stay straight, I want to let you know straight, the enemy cannot reach your mind. 
He has no power in his demons. And you say, I should feel like he does. Why? Because we talk. He could listen to our talk. He could listen to what we say. Or our posture. Or our movement. Or our our outer character. But it can never read your mind. I need you to understand this. But it can sure cloud your judgment. Your eyes will see your ears that hear everything. The smell. That all those senses, the taste, even the taste. Hi Stephanie. God bless you. Good morning. Welcome home. Hey Nadian. God bless you. Welcome home. Welcome home, everybody. The mind, it's mind-boggling. It is a computer in itself. But if the enemy and his demons uh, sabotage us in any way in firing the dirt of the, the darts of doubt, the darts of confusion, or the dart of conf- confer- comfortness. In other words, you feel comfortable in the state of mind that you're at. He, he would conquer these things. But the faith is what stabilizes. When you put up the shield of faith, so those fiery, firing darts don't penetrate our minds, our hearts, or any area other area of our bodies. We can be shielded. Not because you deserve it, but because you accept it. Because you accepted you, you accepted the challenge, you accepted Christ as your personal savior. You accepted. You accepted. You, you accepted by faith. Chunky 646. Good morning. Don't know who that is, but God bless you. Welcome home. Your faith is what's going to, the shield of faith will extinguish, it's an extinguisher of the fire, fire extinguisher is the faith. When you lift up the faith, the shield of faith is what stabilizes you, it protects you, it gives you full coverage. That's what it does. Because you said yes. Because you accepted the challenge. In the, I said, in the nights is where, um, um, is where we, we all struggle. We all struggle with it should have, could have, didn't. In the night is where. All your problems just come running down, isn't it? It's in the nighttime where you feel the pressures of life. I'm going to tell you, it's when you're sleeping, it's when you're being attacked the most. But lift up the shield of faith, which extinguishes all firing darts of the enemy. I want to conclude with that. I want to bless you. Tomorrow's part two, right? Tomorrow's part two of fire extinguisher. Tomorrow, part two. So you got to be with us so you can find out the plot, you know, the, the ending plot to the fire extinguisher. So please be on tomorrow. Amen. And thank you for being with us. This precious, um, um, Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So, thank you, uh, Patricia. 
Father, let me know. Lama to pay us. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, Sister Illo, bless you. She is my favorite person. Well, amen. She's my favorite person too. Amen. Oh, uh, excuse me. She's my fourth favorite person. <laughs> amen. But we bless you in the name of the Lord. Amen. And we thank God for each and every one of you. But Jesus is the way. There is no, um, there's no other, there's no other one but Christ Jesus. Life cannot be the same. Life cannot be the same. You might say, well, I find life or dandy, Pastor E. Uh, it will never be the same. Because Christ is my all in all. My everything. As a living proof of that. Um, he's my savior. Savior. I wouldn't have it any other different. Christ is my answer. He could be your answer too. I answered the call at the age of 12. He phoned me and not in a literal sense but he did a call on me and I responded to the calling. I was 12 years old when I accepted Christ as my personal savior. My mother uh, saved, washed, baptized in the spirit a higher calling in her life. She accepted the challenge, but I had to make a decision on my own. People think that we can, we can, we're under that same umbrella. Maybe of your grandparent, mother, aunt, uncle, somebody in your household. But sadly to say that this is an individual thing. This is a personal thing. It's a personal thing. Christ came to set the captives free. If you want to be free, then you must accept that he's the way. Why does he, Christ says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am life. And, and that kind of bottles up life itself. There are paths that we must take, decisions that we must take, but he's the, he's the only decision. He says, I am the way. <laughs> Why? Because he, he accepted the challenge of dying for us. That is the gift of God. God gave his son as a living sacrifice that we don't have to be in condemnation. We were directly going to hell, but Jesus gave us the U-turn. Oh my goodness. Jesus deterred us from hell, from eternal condemnation. My goodness. You need to understand. And I didn't come because of that. I came. I came because I love God. You love God? I love God. <laughs> because I love Him for what He did in my life, saving me dying on the cross of Calvary. He set the precedent. He's the way. He's the path. And then he says he's the truth. And that's a whole thing. The truth. The truth a lot of people have. A lot of theologians, a lot of scientists, and a lot of um, um, a, uh, men of prominence, men of great you know, but there isn't. He's the truth. And he's life. And no one comes to the Father except through me, he said. He said it because his sacrifice paved the way for all to come to him. His sacrifice made a way for us to be alive today. Alive eternally. So you can have that. If you want to accept them, you want to accept them. There are four things that you should do. Four things that you should put in play. Four keys that you have to open the door. 
You have four keys. You're, like, you're living like in New York with five keys. Number one key to opening the door of your heart is repentance. In the book of Acts chapter 3 verse 19 and 20, it says, Repent therefore and be transformed, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Now, the, the presence, you want that refreshing, you must repent. You must be transformed. You must do a 180, a change. Secondly, you must admit that you are a sinner. Why admitting is so important? Or because it, it comes from the heart. It's humble. It's recognizing, right? Uh, this scripture, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, tells us, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It, 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 it exemplifies. That scripture exemplifies our humbleness, recognizing that we must admit that we are sinners. A sinner needs to acknowledge or recognize that they have sinned. That's the second thing. Thirdly, you must believe. Without faith, it is impossible to serve God. It's impossible to live for Christ. Acts chapter 16, verse 31 tells us, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Believe that he died for your sins and that he rose on the third day and that you trust in him alone for your salvation. Committing your life to his all Jesus is asking of you is to believe in him. And the last one is first, the last one is confession. Nobody wants to confess. First John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins. Confess your sins today. You only need to tell Jesus that you have sinned and ask for forgiveness, then he will forgive you no matter what sins, no matter what sins you have committed. Well, if you want to make that step, if you want to make all right we'll pray I was just reading Nadia's if you want to accept Christ as your personal Savior I want you to bow your heads and repeat after me this prayer Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus, I humble myself before you, admitting, no, nope, repenting of all my sins. I admit that I'm a sinner. And Lord, I believe wholeheartedly that you died on the cross and that you rose on the third day. And Lord, I confess all my sins and I lay it on the cross. Wash me in your blood, wipe my sins away, and write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you made this your prayer this morning, then I would love for you to write to us. Our email address is uh, coffee, pastor e at gmail.com. Coffee, pastor e at gmail.com. Take your anointed oil and I want you to pray. I want you to anoint yourself this morning. Anoint yourself. We're going to declare a word over your body, over your mind, over your heart. Uh, amen. I want you to take this time and uh, anoint wherever you are feeling sick. If it's the stomach, the throat, the eyes, anywhere. In the comfort of your home or your job or in the car. Do it right now. If you have anointed or just place your hand where you are sick. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm lifting up every family, every home, every situation. We place it in your hands. Father, we ask this morning that you heal us, body, mind, and soul. 
that you will be able to help us navigate through troubles and problems of life. Lord, we're, 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 we're confronted with challenges, decisions that we must make today or tomorrow or this week. Father, give us peace. Give us peace in that answer. Give us peace, O oh Lord, that peace that surpasses all understanding. We ask for that exam that you give us um, calmness, reassurance in our relationships. Father, we proclaim the glory of the Lord. We lift up uh, Reina, Evangelist, and their families. And their family, Lord, I lift up the little messengers of Christ and their families, Lord. I pray for, for Chris and Rebecca, the family, the Soto family. Lord, I thank you, Father, for Minister Lamont Banks. Bless them, keep them, give them strength and wisdom and knowledge. Bless the ministry, uh, Lord, Psalm Sunday, Psalm, Psalm Saturday International. Or, uh, Lord, I, I bless and bless his family. I lift up Carmen Milano Ortiz and the family, and evangelist Javi and his family, and the ministry, Lord, I pray for Naomi Romero Pacheco as well as Abby Kadabi, Stacy Washington, Stephanie Marie Victoria, and her family. Lord, I lift up Nadia Brown that she's requesting prayer uh, to help her pray for her father, I think, gone into surgery today and help pray for, the, for her daughter and cousin doing exams today and tomorrow. Bless them. Bless their lives. I pray that you guide us and direct you and that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Washington to the world, spreading the gospel, telling everybody, if you need a smile, he's got it, he's got it, if you need a word, he's got it, woo, come on, Pastor E, spreading the love of God, okay now, do you know what time that is? Do you know what time it is? Come on, Kofi. Family, do you know what time it is? From the nation's capital or national capital of the world, Washington, D.C., from the state of Virginia, because Virginians are what? For lovers, happy you've been with me, blessed and honored that you've allowed me to be with you, you, and me. Let's all see you next time. Same God time, same God channel. I've been your host. I've been your pastor. I've been your friend. Coffee with Pastor. I love you guys. Stay blessed.